Welcome to Emperor's Path, my name is SBJ and today we are going to be talking about one of my recent commission pieces. So if you're new to the channel, you may not be uh, aware, but I do commission painting, whether that's repaints or weathering. Uh, my bread and butter previously has always been Network Southeast. It's the one that I enjoy doing the most and it's the one that I get the most work with when it's a repaint. Uh, recently, I wanted to do the Southwest Trains EMU livery, which worked and coincided really nicely with uh, a commission. So Greg from Ebsworth Street slash Gordon's Lane uh, contacted me and asked about doing it and it fitted in perfectly with me doing my own. Uh, what happened throughout this project is I basically had to put my one aside and basically allow me to work on Greg's. Uh, I was doing sort of like a half kit built version of it, whereas Greg's were the Backman Class 411s uh, that we decided to leave as the unrefurbished version. So the easiest way to explain what the big difference is, is that on the unrefurbished versions, which is how it comes as a ready to run model, is the guards section is up by the end of the train, so up near the driving ends. On the refurbished models, they decided to extend the seating area right up until the driver's compartment and move the guard's van or the guard section into one of the central cars, um, basically just allowing for a bigger space for the guards to go into. I don't know if this is exactly why they did it, but it is one of the big changes that they did on these. Um, so with that in mind, with the ready to run models, they don't come with that change. They come in the old method. They still look great. And basically with Greg's ones, he was completely happy to leave the model as it was, but just repaint it. Um, this was a really interesting uh, bit of work for me to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the final pictures. Uh, I did a little photo shoot uh, before I sent these off to Greg. Um, couple of pictures for you to look at then I'm going to talk about it and then at the end for the first time ever we're going to have a big running session with these two particular locos so I'm going to let you have a look at some pictures and I'll be back So there you go, there's some nice close up pictures of these particular forceps as they are uh, known. Um, they are a class 411 and 4CEP, uh, which I am not the person to try and explain this. I would send you in the region of the Blood and Custard website, uh, NSE Latchmere or various multiple units. They are my key knowledge base for anything electric multiple unit. Um, I will leave links in the description down below so that you can go and visit their channels because they have been super supportive in this entire project for me. So it may seem quite a simple change to go from the Network Southeast livery into the Southwest trains. After all, it's the exact same shapes, just slightly different colour changes. That's what I thought. Turns out it's not exactly the same. Um, the premise behind it is there are some slight changes that made it a little bit more difficult to do, but I overcame those, or at least I hope I overcame those successfully. So the Network Southeast version, uh, I'm going to put a little picture up here, has grey at the bottom, white gap, red, white gap, blue. Uh, I tend to call these the Aquafresh Express because they're the same colour as Colgate and Aquafresh. Uh, some people call them Toothpaste Express as well, um, or Toothpaste Trains, I'm not entirely sure. But this is one from my childhood. Uh, I, As I've gotten more involved, that I've realised that these are the two liveries that meld together. And I some, some of my uh, memories from a child are an amalgamation of the... Network Southeast and the Southwest Trains, and that's why I've always had both of those in my head. Um, Southwest Trains, at the moment of filming this, do not have many ready to run models, and especially do not have any ready to run models in this particular era of livery. You can get some of the now outdated new Southwest Trains on the 
class 450s um, and you can also get it on the likes of the class 73 by Dapol. Um, they do a fantastic job of them, they look absolutely sensational uh, but this sort of era where they went from Network Southeast into Southwest trains um, is not covered yet. So now that you've seen how the Network Southeast version looks I'm going to put the Southwest trains version up here. Now what you can see on here is they've changed a couple of bits of colours around and on first glance as I say it looks like there's not really much change. On the bottom you have white, then you have a white gap, then you have orange, then you have a white gap, then you have red, then you have a white gap, then you have the blue. So the premise is still that red, white and blue with the orange of uh, stagecoach and southwest trains thrown in there. The red has moved up to where the main white section was on the Network Southeast version. And whilst this isn't a massive problem because you're still forming the same shapes, it means that you do need to have those very fine white lines in between them, which is, I found a lot harder to do. It did make me appreciate the Network Southeast livery a whole lot more. And it's certainly something that I will remember. However, it has rekindled this absolute desire and love to start throwing in a bit more Southwest trains in the mix. Um, there's not much that carried the Southwest trains livery, but there's a lot that carried the network Southeast and being the heretical person that I am, I really want to do some two EPBs in Southwest trains livery. Uh, I think it'd be fantastic. I think it would really suit the units. Um, so I'm tempted to go and do that. So sorry in advance, but I feel like it would be quite a fun thing to have on the layout. Um, all in all, it has been an exceedingly fun project, but it has taken slightly longer than uh, I previously thought it would. I really struggled with how much I had to mask on this one. It felt more tedious. The other thing I really struggled with was the transfers. You can get some of the most obscure transfers out there on the internet for trains. And to me, they seem obscure because they are the kind of thing that maybe only ran on like two or three locos. Whereas this Southwest Trains livery has been around for years. And I was just shocked you cannot get the Southwest Trains logo in a ready to run or a ready to print transfer. Uh, it's worth mentioning that I had, I have got most of the transfers for these units from Railtech. Their uh, custom numbers and set numbers set is fantastic great value for money some of the best transfers i've ever used for applying to trains um and i want to give them a shout out um sadly we weren't able to get the southwest trains logos done however i do want to give a massive massive shout out for rainbow railways because i emailed them with a picture of the southwest trains logo and within two three days they'd managed to mock up the transfers for me. And because we were unsure of what sizes I needed, they gave me three separate sizes to try out. And I just want to say a massive thank you for that. Like the the cost was was great. Like I, I didn't wince when I saw the cost of it. Um, and I will happily, happily use Rainbow Railways again in the future. Uh, fantastic customer service. And there will be a link in the description below for their main website and their Instagram as well. So by Sam standards, this is nowhere near as much talking as I usually do. Uh, I wanted to just talk you through this particular project. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of side by sides of the Network Southeast and the Southwest train so that you have a rough idea from it. And we're going to go to a running session in a second.
and there we have it we are at the end of the video uh, I want to say the usual thing if you would like to uh, talk commissions with myself uh, or you are interested in doing painting lessons please get in contact with me via Instagram or through my Facebook page you can we can organize something there and we can talk prices if you decide not to go with me I am not offended I, I will not get critical and never talk to you again and on that note i do want to say that we do have an emperor's path facebook group uh it's small at the moment but uh i do post quite a lot of bits in there uh i try to make it so that i'm not necessarily posting everything from instagram and facebook in the same thing so you may see some things on the facebook page that you don't usually see likewise you may see some things on instagram that you don't usually see on the facebook page if you want to support what i do you can go over to ko-fi or coffee I'm still doing it uh, and you can support me for as little as it costs for a cup of coffee per month. If you would like to pick up some Emperor's Path t-shirts or merch you can do so at Redbubble and the link will be in the description below. If you haven't already please like and comment on this video. Let me know in the comments down below what liveries you'd like to see in the future or let me know if there's something that you think that I need to work on in the future because the list is endless. One thing I have realized is that I do not know half as much of the liveries as I thought I did. If you have enjoyed this and you've made it to the end of this video please click the subscribe button it does massively help you can click that little bell as well however you don't have to next video coming out is going to be a layout update video i've been doing some little bits on the layout in the background so i'm excited to show you those otherwise thank you very much for watching i hope you have a lovely time weekend week day holiday not holiday um so yeah thanks very much i've been sbj bye